Stand by. And not necessarily of this station, its management, or other advertisers. This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and UpSnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well with Heather Dowen, NMD. Spend time with Dr. Heather and her guests for tales of love, adventure, and how to be healthy and happy. Now, here's your host, Dr. Heather Dowen. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. My name is Dr. Heather Dowen, as they say, and I'm really glad they put the disclaimer before this show. That makes, that just tickles me. Um, we are a podcast associated with the website naturopathicmd.com. We do have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts that you can follow, and they are all a little bit different. Um, we like to share information on how to live a healthy life, take pictures as far as like how we live our own day-to-day you know, recipes, products that we like, etc. And so I urge you to either like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram and also check out the website because we offer a lot of the options that we're going to be talking about today and every episode um, as far as how you can live your healthiest life and prevent disease and feel more well. Um, I was inspired to do a show today on depression and anxiety because I've had a really rough couple of months and Part of you know, what we look at as uh, naturopathic medical doctors is one of our tenets is to physician heal thyself. And I was recognizing a lot of uh, symptoms in myself that started to sneak up on me that I didn't take care of very well. And so I've been under a tremendous amount of stress the last four months, um, pretty solidly. And um, that started to really take a toll on my mental health. And as you know, we're going into the holidays. And so a lot of people really struggle with anxiety and depression around the holidays for whatever reason. And that can also have to do with, you know, shortening days and less sun exposure and seasonal affective disorder and that sort of thing, low levels of vitamin D, sure. And as always, it's important for me to say that if you are anxious or if you are depressed, Sometimes life just, you know, hands you a shit show and those are reasonable responses to to the life, right? But when those symptoms, and I'm talking about all sorts of different neurological things, but let's concentrate on anxiety and depression for the most part today. When those things start to affect your life, affect your work, your relationships, your sleep, your, you know, quality of life, that's when they start to really become a problem. So on top of the, you know, shit NATO that I've been in for the last four months, two weeks ago, um, my dog suddenly died from um, a terrible attack of seizures that no one could get him out of. And so that is a situation in life that there's a reasonable response for depression to occur. Um, loss of a loved one, end of a relationship, um, loss of a job, move, uh, all of these things can have a response in our bodies for lots of different reasons, but that's normal. And unfortunately, a lot of the um, medical profession is drugging us so that we don't necessarily feel those feelings. And I don't believe that you can separate mind, body, spirit, and emotions. We are one thing. That's why I practice holistic medicine, which means looking at everything, looking at the whole and treating it as a whole. And so environment, you know, as far as what happens to us can certainly have an effect on how we feel, whether that's um, grief from loss or stress, all kinds of different things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to immediately be put on a um, antidepressant or an anxiolytic because we need to process those feelings in order to move through them. And a lot of those medications that are currently used never really allow you to process 
they deaden your responses that are healthy. And so I like to avoid using them until the, you know, absolutely necessary. I do take a lot of people off of antidepressants and anxiety medications because the side effects on them can be really terrible. So they can disrupt your sleep, cause weight gain, change your sex drive, cause impotence, brain fog, um, and other things that uh, I don't have the research to support and I probably shouldn't throw out there, you know, as far as being inflammatory. And that's why, you know, the station puts a disclaimer before my show, <laughs> right? So sometimes antidepressants are necessary, just like any pharmaceutical. Um, sometimes anxiety medications are necessary because there is a time and a place. And those are some of our primary um, hard hitting, you know, actions that we can take for, for results that you can't deny that happen, you know, fairly quickly. Um, antidepressants and an anxious um, medications operate a little bit differently. And so anxiety drugs can happen pretty quickly because they basically just, you know, put a towel over your brain and, you know, calm it, calm it down so that you can't, you know, have the feelings of anxiety. Now, depression medications often take a lot longer to work. And so in my opinion, since they take just about as long as natural substances, we might as well try the natural substances first. So today, what I wanna talk about is I wanna teach you a little bit about how the brain works. And I don't think that anybody really knows exactly. I think that the human brain is way more complicated than um, what medicine and science like to lead you to believe. A lot of our um, pharmaceutical medications that we use for anxiety and depression, depression except, exceptionally so. If you Google and go to WebMD or Medscape and you look for mechanism of action for an antidepressant, you won't find any. They'll say, well, this increases serotonin at the you know, uh, synapse. And so that's like Prozac, right? SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. That means that they stop, they keep serotonin in the gap between neurons so that they can signal more. But the mechanism of action as far as how it does that is unknown. And call me uh, crazy, but I don't like to put stuff in my body that I don't really know how it works. And also, um, there's long-term side effects that we don't really know about. You know, we can see that, you know, after the fifties and sixties with mother's little helper with Valium, so that's what that um, is in reference to. Um, there's some terrible side effects from that. And we can see them in long-term studies and the body will always find a way. You can't just hammer it and hammer it and hammer it. It'll always find a way. So like with, uh, diabetes type two and insulin resistance. If your insulin levels get too high, the receptors on the cell that recognize it get decreased and that's insulin resistance. And so blood sugars don't always go down after and people can get used to different medications because the body will adapt. And that's why it's so important to actually address the cause of disease and um, do specific things to address that while managing symptoms, of course, right? Because there's some things that, you know, sometimes it's just impossible to live with symptoms that we have. But long-term use of medications until the end of your life is idiocy because you're only making the problem worse. And if you've been watching TV in the last, God, 10 years, which I don't do a whole lot because I totally believe with a bumper sticker, kill your television. I think that it's a complete, um, mind control technique. And there's a lot of fear and waste of time and waste of life that comes with television. I'll, you know, Netflix and chill every now and then, but it's a, it's a rare occurrence and I try to do other things instead. But, you know, in the bent of what we're talking about, people that are anxious or depressed in their life often like to try to turn themselves off and avoid whatever it is that's causing the depression in their life. And Imbalances in your brain chemistry aren't the only reason why you would experience um, anxiety or depression. And so I would like to open up 
um, this for discussion or for questions. So if you do want to call in to ask a question while we are live here, um, you can call 844-389-8255, or you can send Contact Talk Radio Network a message on the Facebook page, and uh, they can get it to me. Actually, Heather, I'd like to interrupt you for one moment. Sure. The number is 844-390-8255. Oh. That's 844-390-8255, and you can call in live and, and speak with Heather yourself and ask her questions about the topic today. Good Thank thing you. that you're there to take care of that, Cam. Well, that's what I'm here for, my dear. <laughs> Great. So, um, good. I, I invite you to call in because I do like to have this be a discussion. So, it, but let's get back. So I had my dog die, right? There's, there's a grief that has to go through that. Two weeks, and I'm feeling much better. You know, like it was a, it was a traumatic period of time, and it came on top of other crazy stuff that was going on. Um, and I'll tell you, I did take a Xanax the night that he died because otherwise I wasn't going to get sleep. Um, I was, I was too upset. And so there is a time and a place. Um, and I didn't want to wait for the natural remedies to, to kick in. I just wanted to take, take a night off, but that was one occurrence. And there's really not much more I can do about, you know, the loss of a loved one, you know, someday I'll get another little black faced boxer dog and, um, I'll heal that little bit of my heart, but I'm still gonna grieve a little bit about that. Now, it was interesting, however, because there were some other things that were going on in my body at the same time that made everything a little bit more problematic and made everything worse. So first let's talk about the brain. So my bachelor's in science is in neurobiology and I did it with a co-major in sociology because I wanted to get both sides of, of human consciousness and nature versus nurture. Um, how do they come together? How do they create what it is that we perceive life as? You know, what filters do we look through? But also, I mean, there's definite genetic components to how the brain works and how we make our neurotransmitters. So that's a little bit about my background. I've been fascinated about this for years. I did bat, um, battle depression in, uh, in college. And I think that that was largely a uh, environmental piece, but also probably because I was drinking too much. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, so the nervous system, your brain is made up of neurons. And the way that neurons communicate is they've got a synapse between them, which is like a little gulf. And when you've got a um, signal coming in through one neuron, it has to jump that gulf in order to continue and propagate that signal to the next neuron. Now, as I said, I don't think that science has any clue as far as how consciousness is really um, created in our human mind or heart or spirit or wherever you want to believe that it is. I, I don't think that, you know, you can argue definitely one way or another. Um, mind body medicine is an amazing piece of medicine that most people don't use as far as how to support your brain in helping your body to heal. That's a different topic we'll get on, you know, probably in a future show because it's a big one. So what we use to jump that gulf between your neurons are called neurotransmitters. And so the way that the brain lights up with electrical activity um, has been studied quite a bit with whether it's functional MRIs or um, uh, electroencephalograms or um, even uh, looking at PET scans as far as like what areas of the brain are metabolizing most. And I don't think we really have any idea how it works, but with our rudimentary idea of neurotransmitters being associated with certain actions on other neurons, that's what I look at. And so I have a test. It's, um, it's this one right here. It's done by Neurolab. And what it does is it looks at metabolites in your urine that can extrapolate um, from there the levels of neurotransmitters that you are metabolizing in your body. And so it looks at the major ones like glutamate, which is often excitatory neurotransmitter, um, MSG, 
can actually mimic glutamate. And that's why some people have serious reactions to it. It's a neuro excitatory toxin actually. And so the toxins um, that we get exposed to can also have an effect on how your brain is functioning. Um, MSG is only one example. And remember a lot of times natural flavors do mean MSG unless it's labeled otherwise. So it looks at glutamate, serotonin, but epinephrine, norepinephrine, uh, and it looks at those levels in your brain based on how you're metabolizing them and excreting them out of your kidneys into your urine in order to see how to increase these neurotransmitters naturally. And since we're on the tail end of Thanksgiving and we probably, well, except for me because I'm allergic to turkey, everybody ate their faces off with turkey. And we have a joke you know, in this country about you know, eating a whole bunch of turkey and passing out. And turkey is actually a meat that's very high in tryptophan. And tryptophan is an amino acid that is converted into serotonin and melatonin, both of which help with sleep and can cause drowsiness. Serotonin is also an anti-depressive um, neurotransmitter. And really, you know, for the sake of being clear, the way that the second neuron reacts to a neurotransmitter is completely dependent on the receptor that that neurotransmitter attaches to. So none of this is black or white. Serotonin is um, antidepressant or serotonin is um, anti-anxiolytic. Everybody's a little bit different. And that's why it is really good to work with a clinician when you're dealing with this. You really never should take yourself off of antidepressants or anxiety medications by yourself without having um, an expert do it with you because as, you, as your brain reacclimizes to what was wrong in the first place, you can have bad side effects and backlashes. And that's the last thing that we need. So I do recommend you know, working with a professional on this. And we do have resources at naturopathicmd.com to refer you to people in your area, or you can work with one of our doctors online in order to do this. So that testing is really cool. And it also comes with uh, salivary cortisol testing. And so you spit in one of these little tubes four times a day, and it can look at your cortisol curve, which is important because hormones have a huge effect on your brain chemistry. And we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, they don't supply the best sort of cup to pee in, but you know, when you, if you want to get that test, we can help you with uh, adaptations to that at that time, because it's really not big enough to um, not get it all over your hands. But I just find that funny. It just fits in the test box most likely. And so with those neurotransmitters, there are ways to affect them naturally like Turkey. And so Turkey has tryptophan in it, or you can take uh, tryptophan capsules. Now, some people don't have what's needed in order to convert tryptophan to serotonin effectively. And so they may have depression because they don't have the enzyme systems working well enough in order to do that appropriately. And in that case, what we want to do is we want to skip those enzymatic steps. So you may have heard of 5-HTP. 5-HTP is the first step from tryptophan to serotonin. From 5-HTP, then it goes to serotonin and melatonin. Now, 5-HTP is a great thing to take, but if you don't have magnesium, B6, et cetera, you can't, uh, you can't metabolize to serotonin well either because you're lacking the cofactors necessary in order to do that. Coincidentally, Magnesium and B6 are the two highest deficiencies that we have in an American diet. And they're needed not only for detoxification of toxicants and support in your liver to get rid of all this crap that we live in in this toxic bubble of mess, but they're also needed for converting amino acids into neurotransmitters. And so it's no wonder that over the last 15 years, we've had a 65% increase in antidepressant use. Now, that very well may be because people aren't eating well or they're nutritionally deficient, um, or it also may be because a lot of times you go in and you see a provider and they give you an antidepressant to shut you up like for menopause or fibromyalgia or other things that don't necessarily um, really 
have associations with um, neurotransmitters. Now, fibromyalgia is a very complicated thing, and I'd love to talk about that in the future because it does have a neurotransmitter piece, but it's so complicated you have to hit it from other sides in order to be uh, successful. And I have been quite successful with fibromyalgia treatment because depression can often be a um, one of the symptoms associated with that, but it's so much more complicated. So we have this, you know, epidemic of just handing out antidepressants like candy because people don't wanna deal with their emotions and, or they're not able to make their hormones and their transmitters effectively, or they don't have the framework with which to address emotions that are uncomfortable. And that can come from a lot of different places, whether it's um, family culture or lack of support, or just, you know, the, the discomfort. We're not really used to discomfort in this culture anymore. And so we deaden ourselves. We watch TV or we play online games. We, we read, we do so many different things in order to not actually look at what it is that we need to do. And I would like to inspire you to stop that because your life is ticking away. And don't you want to be present? And don't you want to be healthy? And don't you want to be happy really without the use of drugs and as much as i like using it myself i don't recommend marijuana to manage your brain chemistry right pain great but again you're just covering up the cause you're just put a putting a band-aid on something and if you it's like sewing up a wound you haven't cleaned what happens well it festers it doesn't heal you can get an infection and just make things worse. And so I urge you to really look at the emotions that you're having and make a plan to get out of it. So how are you going to do it? Well, things that you can do besides the nutraceuticals and herbs and things that I'll talk about. Um, take walks without a device. Turn off your device. Turn off your television. Spend some time with yourself. Who are you? Do you know? It's an important question to ask. And so many of us are caught up in, well, I'm a mother, or I'm a doctor, or I'm a teacher, or we are what we do. And that's not really true. Do you know what you really want? Because a lot of times depression and anxiety come from our inner spiritual deep knowing that something isn't right. And if you ignore it for too long, then your brain can follow as far as having neurotransmitter imbalances. But if something isn't right, then let's fix that first. Do you need to leave a relationship? Do you need to leave a job? Do you need to change how you care for yourself? Do you need to exercise more? For God, you know, the best thing for anxiety, you know, sleep issues, depression. My, uh, my youngest brother says that he can cure just about anything with um, sunshine and squats. I think that's a little bit rudimentary, but I hate to admit, even though he's not a doctor, he's a little bit right. And so squats, exercise, sunshine while you're outside getting vitamin nature and you're also getting vitamin D, which is, as we all know, a really important vitamin. Um, there's many things I'm not even gonna go down that rabbit hole, but that's a good place to start. Exercise, make yourself move, put it in your phone. Under reminder, self to do something. Yoga and meditation are two of the best things to do with this because you actually have to be in your body. You actually have to pay attention to what is going on and be present. I've been watching a lot of Kung Fu Panda and uh, it's the, the past is past. The future is, has not happened yet. And all we have is the present. And that's why it is a gift, right? And I totally butchered that, but you get my, you get my meaning. All we have is now. So be present. Be present in your body. How does it feel? Where's your tension? Where's your pain? How's your head feel? How's your stomach feel? Right? Remember that more serotonin is produced in your stomach and your gut, your intestines, etc., than your brain. And there is definitely a gut-brain connection. And it does, it goes beyond probiotics and your microbiome and your healthy flora into something that 
um, also has to do with neurotransmitter balance, but also inflammation, and we'll talk about that as well. And so really take a look in the mirror. Most people don't want to do this. It's absolutely terrifying. No doubt. It's absolutely terrifying to have to see what changes you need to make in order to really be healthy and feel good in your brain. Now, my first job out of medical school was detoxifying drug addicts um, and getting them off everything that you can think of, including methadone, heroin, schizophrenic medications, cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, nicotine, just about any drug you, you can think of. I never helped with Molly, but that's a different story. So drug addicts, and this also goes for people who are addicted to gambling or sex or even you know food, we are all trying to manage our brain chemistry so that we feel well between our ears. That's where so much of our behavior comes from, especially addictive behavior. Now, some fantastically well-adjusted people will manage this with exercise. And um, that is a testament to being absolutely freaking awesome because exercise is the best thing that you can do for just about everything within reason, right? Because then we have um, exercise-based anorexia, which is the opposite of what we really want, um, where that people they can't control um, their need for exercise because then they've become addicted to that as well. So with those addictive patients and the drug addict patients that I had, um, we helped manage their brain chemistry with IV nutrition, um, herbs and helping the brain make the neurotransmitters that they were lacking in order to um, balance their brain so that as they were coming off of these drugs, the side effects were significantly less. But if you don't address what's at the base of it, it's really, really easy to go back. And so you can balance your neurotransmitters and you can detoxify your body. But if you are still in the same position and situation that you were in to begin with, it's going to be really, really, really easy to fall right back into it because you haven't addressed the cause. And the cause isn't necessarily an imbalance in your neurotransmitters or your hormones or too much inflammation. It's usually something that's staring you right in the face that needs to be changed. And I hope you're brave enough to change it. Now, if you're already depressed, if you're already anxious, if you're already dealing with so much stress that you don't even know what to do, it's like chicken and the egg, right? How are you going to take care of, oh yeah, I'll just wake up at 5.30 in the morning and I'll start running every day. Absolutely, I feel perfect to be able to do that, you know, besides this crushing gloom that is hanging over me. That's not exactly what's going to happen, right? That's a you know, setting yourself up for failure and you're not a failure. That's why you have to do lots of different things at once. And the more things that you do in order to support your body's natural functioning, the faster you will get better and the less likely you will be to fall back into old patterns as well as old feelings of depression or anxiety. So before we move on into these next stages as far as nutraceuticals and anxiety and depression, I'd like to take a quick um, commercial break for our sponsors. Are you tired of taking massive rips off your water bomb and almost hacking up a lung? Dr. Wild has developed an all-natural antioxidant water pipe additive designed to smooth smoke and add titillating flavor. Add 30 to 90 drops of our 100% natural antioxidant rich essential oil powered pipe potions to the water in your bomb and smoke smarter. We have six sexy flavors to choose from. Some are soft and sweet, and others are powerfully pungent. We like to think of them as flavors with benefits. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram to learn more about our Pipe Girls. Do you remember the last time you felt healthy and energetic? What would you do if you could regain your health and feel good again? Enjoy spending time with your family? Take a trip. Get back to being active and doing the things that you love. Naturopathic MD can help because we practice natural, 
Functional, logical medicine. Have you ever cut yourself and taken a prescription to stop the bleeding, but the cut stayed open? No, because your body can heal itself. Cuts are usually easy to heal, but chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and digestive problems need the expert support we can provide. Are you ready to take action and get your life back? Sign up for one of our elite concierge programs today. Well, I love the holy angelic uh, music beforehand. That's great, especially going into uh, water bong support. Like I said, you no know, marijuana can be really helpful for a lot of things, but managing your brain chemistry is not one of those. Um, so while you know marijuana can have a lot of effects in the brain, it can help anxiety. Um, overall, it's still just covering up what's really going on. And so what are some things that you can do to start moving your life forward by really getting towards your um, overall health from the very, very basic? So um, I've been working with one of my very good friends to um, feng shui my house. Her name is Dr. Anna Kate Cassio, and hopefully she'll be on um, in the future because she's been helping me to look at where my house is toxic and be able to move that out so that it's not messing up my chi anymore. And I highly recommend it. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, but anytime you change your environment, your body changes too, and your experience changes too. And I think it helps stir up the shit storm a little bit, but I have been able to see that it's actually been a good thing and everything that I'm moving toward is going to be better in the end once all the dust settles from this. And so that's a really good, healthy outlook to have rather than just wanting to sleep and uh, drug myself so that I don't have to feel anything. Now, so that's one way. I really recommend journaling as well because it can help um, get feelings out and you don't even need to keep it. Some of my favorite things have been to do writing down what I don't like or letters to people that have been problematic for me, um, ripping them up, lighting them on fire and flushing them down the toilet. I think that's one of the most therapeutic things that you could possibly do as far as letting stuff go. I also am a trained hypnotherapist and so I've helped people let go by um, hypnotizing them and part of what I do for myself is when I meditate, uh, I hypnotize myself and I visualize things um, like cutting cords, energetic cords or removing things from my life so that they can move out in another way as well. And remember, it's so incredibly cool as far as the brain goes, and I'm not gonna bore you with too much information about it, but when you visualize something, if you think about a golfer visualizing his swing or her swing, your brain sees that in almost exactly the same way as if you were actually doing it. And so visualization cannot be underemphasized. Um, I think it's really funny to see that if you, um, if you, put a pencil in your mouth and look in the mirror. It makes you look like you're smiling. And so in doing that to yourself, you can actually trick yourself into thinking that you're happy. Um, if I catch myself with the, you know, my mouth turning down, I'll smile. And it really does have an effect on how you feel. It seems silly. It seems trite, but it's, it's true. And so sleep is incredibly important. Now, some people get where they need more sleep than is natural. And so I'm not talking to you if you're sleeping 17 times a day and you're, and you're depressed or 17 hours a day and you're depressed. But most people don't get enough sleep and they don't get good quality sleep. And so that's why cortisol is included in that uh, neurotransmitter testing I was talking about because it helps me see the quality of your sleep and in addition to neurotransmitters based on your stress levels and your cortisol levels. So Sleep is really important. You need eight hours of sleep. Um, if you have trouble sleeping, we have uh, general sleep packets at naturopathicmd.com that we can, we can make up for you and send your way to get deeper sleep because getting good sleep will absolutely change your life. You need to sleep in order to be able to 
kind of reboot, clean out, help your brain get rid of toxins. And toxins, I mean, can just be metabolites of what it needs to do to reset so that you can actually get up and do um, what you need to do for the next day. So um, one in four women are on an antidepressant. Isn't that mind blowing? I think it's probably even higher now because it's given for you know just about everything. Um, because if you shut the brain off and you decrease its firing and you you know make it so that it's not doing those warning lights that you should be paying attention to, then um, just about everything gets better, right? Um, but again, it's not taking care of the cause. And so with women, one in six Americans are on antidepressants or like antipsychotic brain altering um, pharmaceuticals. And that's one in four women. And I think it's higher in women because our hormones change a lot more than men's do during the course of our lives. And hormones have an absolutely crazy effect on the brain. So like I said, things that you can do it before we get into that in the hormone piece, yoga, meditation, hot Epsom salt baths before night, because you can't absorb magnesium through your skin. And if you need magnesium to help, especially with anxiety and depression, you can take baths and it can help with sleep, et cetera, if you do it at night. Um, exercise. But if you can't get out of your own way and do those things, then let's talk about the other pieces that can help you get to a place where you're able to make those changes for your own benefit. Now, this is the section of the show called Why Women Are Crazy. I cleaned that up a little bit. So um, let's talk about the main aspects as far as the, the female cycle, estrogen and progesterone. When women start to go through menopause, their progesterone drops off first. And what happens? What are some of the first symptoms of menopause? Anxiety, sleep disturbances, and hot flashes. Well, that's because estrogen does in fact make you crazy. Um, it's highly irritating to the nervous system if it's unopposed or if it's not in balance. And so um, you can actually have seizures from having too much estrogen migraines as well. And so headaches associated with periods, et cetera, aren't just like um, toxins or, or backup like that. It can also be primarily because of your hormones not being in balance. In balance. And so I have another favorite test to talk about, and this is the Dutch test. It's um, the dried urine total, um, uh, total comprehensive hormone uh, or dried urine test comprehensive hormones. And um, it's amazing because it looks at the metabolites. It doesn't just look at estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, right? It looks at 50 different steps between them. And so you can see if you have a metabolite that's high and one that's low, whatever it is between them that connects, that's where you need support. It's fantastic. It's great for infertility, PCOS, but I also really like it, especially with women that have um, uh, like migraines around their period or depression and anxiety, because it tells me specifically what needs to be supported rather than just put you on birth control pills. Don't even get me started. I, it, they're nuts. You're supposed to take them every day for the rest of your life. And what happens? Well, your pituitary shuts down. And so then if you come off of them, a lot of people aren't able to start up their pituitary function. And so that can lead to infertility. And then of course you need more hormones and then your body's toxic from so many years of getting, you know, substances in your body that didn't belong there. And so birth control, there's no real good birth control, but birth control pills are the last piece and then like the progestins that they put under the, under the skin because um, it stops your body's ability to make it because you have a feedback loop. And so that can lead to really significant issues down the road. Plus there's brain effects that come from these things. And it's a significant piece of how our body functions. 
So with hormones, I like to do that testing and then we can balance progesterone and estrogen fairly effectively as well as testosterone um, in order to be able to help smooth period cycles, how to eradicate symptoms, how to balance through menopause and also make any bioidentical hormone replacement that you do decide to do safer, more effective with less side effects. So I don't want to get too much off on the hormonal piece, it's absolutely huge. Um, and the hormones, we, we talk at, at Naturopathic MD about how there's three basic things that can send your, your health into haywire, stress, inflammation, and toxicity. And so stress and toxicity are two huge pieces of why your hormones would be out of balance. And toxicity because when we're metabolizing through our hormones, they go through our hormones, they go through our liver. And if you've got um, PCBs and MTBE and organophosphates and all kinds of other crap that you have to detoxify from the environment that you live in, it makes your symptoms worse when you're metabolizing your hormones because it means that there's a backup and you're more likely to be out of balance with those hormones. And so that can explain why detoxification can help so significantly with um, menstrual cycle migraines, cramping and anxiety and depression around the period. That was the thing that just threw me over the edge because as I get older and I've been under a significant amount of stress, I wasn't supporting my hormones the way that I should have been. And so I took a real nosedive. Um, and then I got my period and I was like, oh, I feel so much better <laughs> right? because my hormones became back into balance more. And it was just like a switch. And so I put a reminder in my phone to make sure that I take my supplements specifically for that. Because as much as I talk about supplements, I don't want to take supplements every day. That's not how I want to live my life. And luckily for me, I live my life cleanly enough that I don't need a whole lot of supplementation. But because just like you shouldn't be your own lawyer, you also shouldn't be your own doctor. So I let that one slip and I missed it, which is fine. I'm on it now. So with the hormonal piece, getting a good idea of where your hormones are, as well as doing liver and detoxification support can be huge if you have anxiety and depression around your periods. And if you are young and cycling fairly normally, and um, you're just having a little bit of anxiety and depression around your periods or um, other symptoms like having trouble sleeping, cramping, et cetera, address it now and you won't have trouble down the road. That's the essence of, of preventative medicine. Figure out now what's causing that because it's not normal. When I went to naturopathic school, I, I used to have to drink a bottle of wine for my period cramps. And um, after I went to naturopathic school and learned like in my first few months, I've never had cramps again. It's, it was amazing. And so I still might drink a bottle of wine and that's why I do this show because I think it's important for you to have fun, but you won't, don't wanna do it as a painkiller. You wanna do it for fun, right? Um, so figure that out now and everything in the future will run easier, especially if you still wanna have you know, children and you don't wanna be um, infertile or pass on toxicity to your kids or other you know, issues. Now, have you ever drank too much and woken up feeling anxious or irritable? Well, often that's because the B vitamins in your body have been depleted so that you aren't able to make your neurotransmitters quite as well because you've run, your liver has been processing um, and needing those building blocks as you slept it off. And so a great way, and this, this is like every anti-hangover cure that you will buy in a drugstore has B vitamins in it. And this is exactly why. Now I recommend getting activated B vitamins because it means that you're skipping enzymatic steps that genetically you may not have working very well. And these are really common, like my favorite enzyme, MTHFR. I don't know. It's my favorite. If you know me, you know why. Um, because you can't, activate your folate as well. And so that can lead to all different kinds of neurological issues as well as infertility, et cetera. And so knowing your genetic piece is fantastic. 
we have a link on our website that you can um, follow in order to order um, nutrition genome and have me um, analyze it for you so we can see where those nutritional um, deficiencies are that come from your genome and you can get a specialized address that and um, even make your genes function even better. And so that's the hormonal piece and a little bit of the nutritional piece. Taking amino acids to help balance your transmitters is a really good idea. Now, one of my favorites is something that's in Red Bull and it's taurine. And taurine just kind of makes, so you have membranes, your neurological system, every cell in your body has a membrane. And those membranes, especially in your muscles and your nervous system are irritable and excitable. Maybe just like me, right? So when I teach my students, I would say that. So irritable and excitable. And that means that um, they, they're signaling mole molecules and cells. And so um, if your membranes on those cells are inflamed, then that means that they're not functionally, op they're not optimally functioning. And there's lots of stuff that you can do to keep your membranes from being less inflamed. Detoxification is a one big one. I, as you all know, if you've listened to this ever before, you know that I'm a huge fan of food, sen food sensitivity testing. And I talk a lot about the ALCAT test, which you can also get at naturopathicmd.com. The ALCAT test um, is a moderate, it looks at histamine that's released primarily, histamine that's released um, by your cells when you come into a food that you're sensitive to. What happens if you take an antihistamine? You get drowsy, right? Histamine is one of the neurotransmitters that keeps our brain awake and responsive and irritable. And if you get too much of it, it can cause things like anxiety. And so decreasing histamine in your body can be a really big piece for addressing um, anxiety and cardiovascular issues as well. So we talked about the B-complex, you always want essential fatty acids. And I will do my signature plug for cover three, um, which is a uh, orange creamsicle slurry that is full of good things for your brain. It can help, um, we've seen functional MRI results where it helps um, not only in concussions, but also in memory, um, white and gray matter increase, um, which is awesome. I can't wait to see further results for that. And um, it helps with healing up the brain and helping it to function in reflexes, critical thinking, etc. cetera. And um, you can either order that on naturopathicmd.com or you can go to cover three spelled out.com. And I think that they have coupon codes for first time orderers um, in order to um, get a discount on it. So you can see if you like it, it's amazing. I give it to my uh, loved ones. Um, I give samples to people all the time because I've seen incredible things happen. Really anti-inflammatory and it also helps rebuild functioning of the ingredients that it has in it. And it tastes good, so you can even trick kids into taking it or picky people. Um, so those essential fatty acids are in cover three. Um, you also, we talked a little bit about taurine. I didn't want to get off too much. So taurine helps stabilize your neurological membranes, which makes them less irritable. Tyrosine can help with people that have like ADD, ADHD, um, as well as depression. Tyrosine is one of the uh, amino acids that leads to producing epinephrine, norepinephrine, and thyroid hormone. And now again, depression like 30% of the people on antidepressants have hypothyroid that's subacute that a conventional care provider hasn't diagnosed. So that's another thing that we need to check hormonal wise is, is thyroid. And I don't wanna to get too much down the rabbit hole on that, but most people's thyroids are failing because of stress, nutritional deficiencies. They don't get enough iodine. And here on the West Coast, we're getting hammered with radiation. Uh, so we talked a little bit about 5-HTP, taurine, tyrosine, glycine. If you have anxiety, glycine is a just, it's freaking fantastic because what it does is it helps increase the neurotransmitter necessary um, or the neurotransmitter necessary to activate the receptors that Valium and Xanax act on. 
And so that's GABA. And you can take GABA too. Some, I think that it gets broken down in the, in the stomach, but it is always helpful to take. Um, there's other herbs that you can do as well. We had a whole episode on herbs for the flu. Um, I love kava kava. If you have a kava kava bar near you, I say go and enjoy yourself. It is a Polynesian drink from a root, Piper methysticum. I like it that it makes my lips go numb, but also it has a really non-alcoholic relaxing effect on muscles and your brain without clouding your thinking like alcohol does. It's also, um, it's, it, it's just nice. And I like the taste of it. You, it's an acquired taste, but I'm weird. I like the taste. Um, so St. John's wort is one of the most common things that you hear about for depression, but that can't be taken with a lot of medications. And so I'm going to steer away from that. I really like Melissa officinalis, which is lemon balm. And lemon balm is a really nice supportive herb for brain chemistry. But maca too. Oh, I love maca. That's a good one because it does hormonal and neurological effects as well. Now you can also talk about adrenal function and thyroid function. Remember, none of this happens in a vacuum. And so one of the things like my great love in medicine is actually compounding herbs, because what you can do is you can take something for the adrenals, you can take something for the pituitary, you can take something for the um, you know, musculature and the immune system and put them all together so that they work synergistically. And um, that's like tincture compounding. It's my favorite part. And um, so if you're interested in that, then you can drop us a line to concierge at naturopathicmd.com or learn more on our website. Um, because I think that when you personalize medicine like that and you don't just treat one area, then the effects speak for themselves. And obviously you need to check, you know, with any kind of fatigue and brain fog, um, there's a toxic component as well. And so with looking at that three, you know, that little triad of, of evil that causes, causes disease, stress, inflammation, and toxicity, you have to address all of them in order to really address what's going on in your health and your life. And again, really taking a look at your life. Now, if you just want to drink or gamble or, you know, smoke or, you know, take antidepressant medications until the end of time, that is your prerogative. It's your life. But if you want to not do that and you want to live a vibrant, vital life where you're present and you're having good relationships and you wake up happy and excited and looking forward to your day, then you really have to take, take account for where you are. And there's a thousand different things on YouTube for meditations thousands, millions, probably billions at this point. Pick one you like and just commit to doing that. I used to love the movie, What About Bob? Because it's all about baby steps, right? Baby steps, build upon them. You will feel better. If you just take a you know, activated B-complex vitamin for a month with breakfast, that's a start. It's a start, you will feel better. If you recognize that things are making your stomach irritated and you probably shouldn't eat them, make a decision not to eat them. If you know you really do have all of the power in your own hands, in your body, in your mind to affect healing. But it's a lot easier if you balance your brain chemistry along the way because that will support you in the other changes that you need to make. So we talked a lot about things that we can implement, whether it's you know, with nutraceuticals or without, again, a good multi-mineral, a good essential fatty acid, and a good activated B-complex. You can find all of those at naturopathicmd.com. Those are a great place to start as far as giving your body the building blocks that you need for everything in your body to work better. Everything. Americans are totally nutritionally deficient and stressed out and toxic and inflamed. And so if you even just do that baby step by committing to take three vitamins a day, that's a start. And then commit to walking outside without your phone, that's a start. Commit to actually looking people in the eye and being present, you know, or, you know, your dog or your cat or whatever, to have that bonding. Walk outside, enjoy the sunshine. 
you know, take time for yourself, meditate, yoga. And then those baby steps will build upon one another. If you want our help, this is some of the stuff that we're absolutely best at. It's complicated and it can take a while to really get down to the, the meat of it, but we have all the tools necessary to help you live a happy and healthy life, get you off of medications, help with anxiety and depression, and really make some changes so that you can go forward in your life feeling better, more in control, happier, healthier. And is there anything better than that? So let's deal with our internal stuff. And I do recommend, you know, going and talking to somebody, finding a good psychiatrist or counselors, like winning the Powerball. But if you have one you like, or you can get a recommendation, we do think that it's helpful, as long as they don't try to just drug your ass into, you know, submission with, with uh, drugs that they don't expect you to ever get off. And then you need to take more and more and more and more and more because most aren't effective. So I'll leave you with this. In order to be deemed effective, an antidepressant has to work 50% of the time in 50% of the people it's giving to. That's a 25% success rate. And that's just nuts, right? So let's look at our inflammation, our hormones, our toxicity, get addressed as far as like what the labs are telling us and see what we can really do. And naturopathic MD can help. And so that's naturopathicmd.com. You can send us an email for an appointment at concierge at naturopathicmd.com. Follow us on Facebook, send us a message there. And we also have Instagram and Twitter. I'm less of a twit, so you probably ignore that. So we do have a time change. I am moving to Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's where we will be for the 7th of December, I think. Cameron can jump in if I'm wrong, um, but we will make an event. Yes, that's correct. Next hey, uh, next Friday. Next yeah, next Friday. We're starting you at 10 a.m. Friday morning. Pacific oh, it's time. Friday. I didn't move to Wednesday. So 10 a.m. Or Wednesday. Friday. No, is it Wednesday you want? You want Wednesday? Oh, no. I. Wednesday it is. Oh, no. It is it? Well, I know. We can what... talk about this another time or did it no. already <laughs> <laughs> we got to go, though. <laughs> we'll this is Dr. Heather Dow with Naturopathic MD and the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. I hope you have a beautiful day. Listen to the Bad Girl's Guide to Living Well. <laughs> I thought it was Friday. Was it, was, well, I have no Wednesday? idea. I didn't know if you wanted me to move to Fridays or Wednesdays. I can't remember. Well, I thought we talked about memory. Friday. I thought we kept it Friday, but it was going to be earlier. Well, that's in the good. Day. Friday's great. Yeah. How are yeah, you doing? I really? just couldn't remember. You doing okay? <laughs>